Okay, welcome back to Chem 431B. I'm uh, still at the conference on uh, cancer research, and so I've uh, found a small corner of a meeting room in order to create this video. So you might have to turn up the volume a little bit because I'm trying to be quiet and not disturb others. So uh, first of all, uh, this is about chapter 13, glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. So here is a uh, cell. This is a nucleus. Maybe here's a mitochondrion. And cytoplasm's uh, glycolysis is going to take place here in the cytoplasm. And today we'll be discussing the first five steps of um, glycolysis. We'll go into some details, but I will go into more details when I see you on Wednesday. Uh, glycolysis is found in all organisms so far that we found, all free living organisms. So they're not found in viruses, but they're found in bacteria and archaebacteria, archaea. They're found in um, protists, they're found in eukaryotes, so eu glycolysis is almost a universal metabolic pathway. It is a catabolic pathway, and it's catabolic uh, because it's breaking down glucose into smaller molecules, uh, two molecules of pyruvate, and it uh, creates ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. There's a net creation of those ATP molecules. So let's get into a little more detail here. Um, so the first step is uh, glucose gets phosphorylated uh, by ATP to make glucose 6-phosphate. So let's see here. Glucose looks like this. This is the number six carbon right here that I'm pointing at. And um, it's got a lot of alcohol groups on it. That makes it nice and water soluble. Whoops. Okay. And this is the number one carbon, two carbon, three, four, five, and six carbon. And uh, ATP, I'll just sort of do an abbreviated form of ATP. It's got this uh, phosphate. got another phosphate and it's got a third phosphate and it's got a ribose ring okay and of course it has an adenine right here. So it has an adenine right there. And uh, the way the phosphorylation occurs is you can imagine that uh, you have this free pair, free lone pair of electrons on the oxygen, on the hydroxyl group of the number, s off the number six carbon of glucose, and that's going to attack the gamma phosphorus atom and then uh, the ADP, this ADP portion will leave. And now you have a phosphoryl group that's on the
that's on the, um, I'm sorry, it's on the uh, glucose. Try to get my eraser. Okay. So uh, that's how the first step goes. And of course, this is a transferase reaction. Uh, the next step is uh, glucose 6-phosphate gets converted to fructose 6-phosphate. That's an isomerase, isomerase reaction. And then uh, fructose 6-phosphate uh, gets converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So I'm at step number three here in my outline. And uh, here it's going to be exactly the same type of idea. You have a uh, gamma phosphate group, B, gamma phosphoryl group being transferred from ATP onto the number uh, uh, one carbon uh, hydroxyl group on uh, fructose. So that's where the uh, phosphate group get, gets transferred onto. And then, uh, then you, uh, this fructose 1,6-bus phosphate gets split by an enzyme known as aldolase, which is a combination of a hydrolase and a uh, lyase. It, it actually has two um, enzymatic functions in it. And you're going to create two molecules. One's called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The other one is called uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Sometimes we abbreviate dihydroxyacetone phosphate as DHAP, D-H-A-P. Uh, we want to eventually make two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. In order to do that, we are going to convert the DHAP to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Okay, And that occurs by an isomerase, isomerase reaction, uh, triose phosphate isomerase. There are some critical histidines in the active site of this enzyme that performs this reaction. And you want to look this up in your book, the mechanism of triose phosphate isomerase. So at the end of the day, after we've gone through the first five reactions, we will notice uh, something very interesting. We notice that um, two ATP molecules uh, have been consumed. In other words, ATP has gone has gone from ATP to ADP, and also we notice that um, uh, glucose, a single glucose, has been converted into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Okay. Uh, we call this first phase, the first five steps, we call that the investment phase of glycolysis. Why do we call that the investment phase? We call it the investment phase because we're actually putting in ATP and we're not getting anything out yet. So much like the stock market, uh, in order to get any money out of the stock market, you actually have to invest money into it. So we call this investment phase the first five steps of glycolysis. And the last five steps, steps one through five, and then we call the last five steps, we call that the payoff phase. I guess I should say phase here. investment phase and the payoff phase. And the payoff phase are steps 6 through 10. And at the end of the day, we're going to get uh, two 
ATP molecules for every glucose um, for every for every glucose that goes in there. So we're going to get two, a net of two ATP molecules. Okay. Um, what else can we say about this? Well, you might think that this is very old stuff, and very boring, but uh, we actually constantly use these um, reactions and derivatives of these reactions in order to uh, 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 help patients. So for example, there is a molecule called 2-deoxyfluorine uh, glucose, fluorine 19 glucose, which looks like this. This F19 actually gives off what's known as a positron, almost like an electron, but it has a positive charge instead of a negative charge. And this is used uh, for detection by a machine, by a technology known as um, PET, which stands for uh, positron. emission tomography okay you probably have heard this term pet pet imaging and it turns out that lots of cancers uh, they consume a lot of glucose and they consume more glucose than other parts of the uh, other organs, or organs actually, and so uh, because of this property, you can give a patient a uh, liquid that would have this um, special type of glucose, this derivative of glucose that has F19 on it, which gives off these positrons, and they and the patient drinks that, and eventually what happens is um, if the person has cancers. Um, the um, F19 will be uh, consumed by the cancers and uh, they can be detected using PET technology. Sorry about that. Okay. So here's a patient and uh, if you do whole body uh, PET analysis, you might find uh, these dark regions here, and those dark regions re represent metastases. Okay. And those are basically secondary cancers that came from the primary cancer that you can detect using this PET technology. This is bad news for the patient, by the way, uh, because um, oftentimes at this stage, it's very difficult to um, treat the patient with any um, meaningful medicines to make those go away. Uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about was uh, this concept of um, some of the delta G's under standard conditions are actually greater than zero for a few steps in glycolysis. And um, that's bad news because that's uh, thermodynamically not uh, very uh, but not favorable but I want you to recall again that the overall delta G is a combination of uh, delta G under standard conditions plus RT times the natural log of the products over reactants okay and as long as we can um, uh, keep this low in other words, we remove those products, we can actually drive a reaction forward.
Okay, so, and we've talked about ways in which to do that. So for example, step number two in this um, glycolysis In glycolysis, step number two in glycolysis will is actually has a positive delta G under standard conditions, but the next uh, the products are actually removed by the next reaction, which is uh, very much uh, has a negative uh, delta G. So overall, every step in glycolysis has to have a negative delta G overall. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is this idea of control regulation of glycolysis. Uh, glycolysis is great when you have an energy charge which is low. You do want to have glycolysis. Okay, you want to have glycolysis when the energy charge is low. Uh, how does that happen? Uh, how does that actually work? Uh, well, there are enzymes such as phosphofructokinase, which undergoes uh, step three. Okay, phosphorylates fructose uh, six phosphate. Let me see here. Hold on. It uh, phosphorylates uh, fructose six phosphate, right, and creates fructose uh, one six bisphosphate. Okay, this step here, this phosphofructokinase, has an uh, this enzyme has an allosteric site. And the allosteric site uh, will bind to AMP, okay, and it will actually cause increased activity of this enzyme. Okay, and that makes sense because uh, AMP levels will go high when the energy charge is low, and so the enzyme activity will go high as well in order to make more ATP eventually to make more ATP. Uh, furthermore, um, ATP okay, will cause the enzyme activity to be lowered. Okay. And that makes sense because uh, if you have plenty of ATP levels in the cell, you want to downregulate phosphofructokinase and you want to lower enzyme activity. You don't want mi very much glucose, you don't want any glucose to be um, traveling through through uh, glycolysis. Okay. All right. We're going to stop here. Okay. And on Wednesday, I'll return and we'll talk about the next five steps of glycolysis. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Bye bye.